You might have perfect sight alignment and perfect sight picture, but if your trigger control is trash, then you're probably still gonna miss the target. Welcome back to our series on the fundamentals of rifle marksmanship. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about trigger control, which is basically the process of moving the trigger directly to the rear without disturbing your sight alignment or sight picture. If you're wondering why I'm not shooting live rounds for this video, it's because the recoil of the weapon often makes it hard to see what the trigger and the trigger finger is doing. And if you absolutely need proof that I know how to shoot, then you can check out one of my previous videos in this series. But for this video, all my demonstrations will be done with an unloaded gun so that you can see what the trigger and my trigger finger are doing. I'll also be talking about this device, which is the Mantis Blackbeard X, which in my opinion is probably one of the greatest tools for practicing the fundamentals and many other skills. But first, let's talk about some elements of good trigger control. And first, we'll talk about grip. Your grip should be firm enough so that you can control the rifle and mitigate recoil, but not too firm so that it induces muscle tremors. And the next element is trigger finger placement on the trigger. Good trigger finger placement enables you to press the trigger directly to the rear without disturbing the sight alignment or sight picture. And when I was taught the fundamentals in the Marine Corps, they used to tell us to place the center of your distal phalange, which is just the last segment of your finger, in the center of the trigger. But what I like to tell people is just place your finger in a comfortable position on the trigger so that you can pull the trigger directly to the rear without disturbing the sights. And when trying to determine how far inside the trigger guard your finger needs to be, just keep in mind that the further away you are from the joint that's moving during the trigger pull, the more movement's going to occur for a given flexion and the more force you'll have to exert to pull the trigger. And to help illustrate this, consider this stick where the stick represents your finger and the point that I'm holding it at represents the joint that has to move whenever you're pulling the trigger. The further I am away from the point of rotation, the more movement occurs for a given rotation. So obviously out here, you have a lot more movement going on than really close to that joint. And if I wanna push something down or push something up, the further away I am from the point of rotation, the more force I have to exert. So the closer you get, the easier it is to push. So imagine if you had a stick and you were trying to flip on a light switch. The longer the stick is, the more force you're going to have to exert to flip on and off that light switch and the less dexterity you'll have in doing so. And you can think of your trigger finger the same way. So this joint, which is the proximal something joint, I don't know what it's actually called, but that's the joint that actually rotates whenever you're pulling the trigger. And then this part is the part that's moving, just like the stick example. The closer I am to that joint, the less movement occurs for a given flexion. But the further away I am from the joint, the more movement occurs and the more force I have to exert to pull that trigger. There is a point of diminishing returns where if you get too close to that joint, it actually interferes with your ability to press the trigger directly to the rear. And the reason for that is because, again, the further away you get, while yes, there's more movement here, but the movement is more linear. So the closer you get, it has less movement, but that movement is more circular. So you wanna be far enough away so that you can induce linear movement on the trigger, but you don't wanna to be too far that you lose leverage and you're moving too much for a given flexion. Okay, now that we've covered where to put your finger on the trigger, now we're gonna talk about the different types of trigger control. When you're aiming at a target, it's unlikely that your sights and sight picture are gonna stay perfectly still. So depending on your stability of hold, there's going to be a little bit of movement. And to avoid missing the target, it's important to know how and when to pull the trigger during this movement. And there are two basic methods of trigger control, and they are interrupted and uninterrupted. Uninterrupted involves smooth, continuous pressure on the trigger until the shot breaks. So basically, you put your trigger finger on the trigger, and you just slowly, slowly creep it to the rear and you're not stopping, you're going all the way to the rear until the shot breaks and the shot should surprise you. And then interrupted trigger control can be used whenever your sight alignment or sight picture is disturbed or when the target is partially obscured. So interrupted would involve pressing the trigger to the rear and then stopping and then you're pulling it again, pull it again and then eventually the shot will break. And if you do it right, the shot will only break when your sights are on target. And it really doesn't matter which technique you use, so long as your sight alignment and sight picture are not disturbed during manipulation of the trigger and your sights are on target whenever the shot breaks. Now, when you think about moving the trigger, I want you to think about pressing the trigger directly to the rear. Don't think about pulling the trigger. And it's not that it really matters too much, but I believe that when you think of pressing instead of pulling, it puts you in a little bit different frame of mind and what you're trying to do to the trigger. Do you remember that game Operation where you have that guy on the operating table and you're trying to use the little tweezers and take things out of his body and if you hit the corners 
of the game board, it'll like buzz at you. Think about trigger control like this. You want to move the trigger directly to the rear and not touch the edges of the channel that the trigger is traveling through. This helps in two ways. First, it prevents you from exerting lateral or vertical forces that cause your weapon to move to the left or right or up and down. And it also ensures that you're only exerting the necessary force to move the trigger. And this additional wasted force can cause the weapon to move and disturb your sight picture, or it can also induce muscle tremors, which will also cause the weapon to move. And I believe that the best way to develop good trigger control and practice all the fundamentals for that matter is through dry fire. And dry fire is the act of practicing the fundamentals of marksmanship with an unloaded gun or with a gun equipped with a training device like the Mantis Blackbeard. Dry fire helps you determine if you have good trigger control by by removing recoil from the equation. To practice dry fire, simply unload your gun and then make sure it's always oriented in the safest direction. And I strongly recommend doing dry fire in an area that is sterile of live ammunition. In addition to using something that renders your weapon inert like this Mantis Blackbeard or like this barrel block, which feeds through the chamber and out the barrel, preventing you from being able to load live ammunition in the chamber. And with either of these devices installed, your weapon will be rendered completely inert so that no live ammunition can be loaded. And these devices are significantly cheaper than drywall repair and lawsuits. Next, let's talk about trigger reset. Trigger reset occurs after you fire a shot and then move the trigger back into position for the next shot. And there are two methods for trigger reset traditional reset, and then flip and press. Traditional reset is the process of firing the shot while pinning the trigger to the rear and then slowly letting the trigger back out until it resets. And the benefit of traditional reset is that it helps with follow through, which is a topic I'll discuss in the fifth video of this series. Flip and press, on the other hand, is the process of resetting the trigger as fast as possible so that you're ready for follow up shots. But for this lesson, I'm only going to be covering traditional reset. And if you're doing dry fire on an AR, since you don't have the ammunition to cycle the action, that means that whenever you press that trigger and the shot breaks, there's not going to be a reset. However, there are some methods around this. One is to manually cycle it yourself every time. So press the trigger, cycle it, let it reset, press the trigger, cycle it. Another method is to remove the charging handle, take some paracord, and then you're gonna take that loop and hook it around the gas key of the bolt carrier group. Once you do that, you'll feed the rope out of the back where the charging handle normally goes, and you'll have a buddy that will pull the bolt and cycle, basically simulating the cycling of the action for you. Now, another option, and obviously a little bit more expensive option than some paracord, is the Mantis Blackbeard X. Not only does this device enable you to reset the trigger up to 10 times per second, but their new Blackbeard X uses an accelerometer to give you instant feedback on your smartphone. When Mantis sent me their original Blackbeard to review, I instantly loved it because for the first time, I could do dry fire practice with multiple shots versus having to reset the action after every shot. Plus, it fires a laser out of the bore to indicate where your shot would have impacted the target. But then they sent me the Blackbeard X, which does everything the first model did, but with the addition of analyzing your shots directly on your smartphone because it has an accelerometer inside the magazine that measures movement. Regardless of what technique you use for good trigger control, just remember this. Trigger control is simply moving the trigger directly to the rear without disturbing the sight alignment or sight picture. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, please like, comment, and subscribe and then hit that bell to be notified of our future video, which is gonna be on stability of hold and breath control. Thanks again for watching, and as always, train to a higher standard.